these are the biggest mistakes that newbies and actually believe it or not not newbies make on amazon part one we're going to be focusing specifically on product research i have one five things that i'm going to list off to you that honestly is so 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 overlooked so i want you to pay really close attention because people make these mistakes all the time and if you want a low risk successful product these are not the things that you should be doing if you know anything about me hello my name is karina hello amazon friends i teach amazon in a very very low risk way so you can rank your product to the top with a minimal investment up front and also ranking it in a very very low risk way and if you catch yourself doing any of these mistakes then you are on a very fast road to something that is high risk high investment and 99.9 .9 a failure now these are very important because they're made every time from people who don't know exactly what to look for for product and if you are one of those people then of course you can also join my low risk private label club for seven dollars at the plclub.com where i teach everybody how to find these low risk products okay so let's get into it you might have seen this product right so let's do an analysis on this the very first mistake is actually going into a product that is very very oversaturated a product a concept a market i like to call it a market research not necessarily product research because a product doesn't mean much but the market does so let's look at what exactly makes this so oversaturated right because i mean the revenue looks great it's high a little too high um search volume seems low enough though right reviews are a little high but that's not what we're talking about why is this specifically oversaturated well if we look at the product itself it's pretty much the exact same thing sure the boards are slightly different and perhaps one has more letters or numbers than something else but when it comes down to this a customer is just looking for a board and honestly it's very arbitrary to which one they're gonna pick i mean does slightly greater background matter it's it's all the same exact thing and the reason why people get on the top and stay on the top is because they're actually paying for full price giveaways and that actually costs thousands not thousand it costs tens of thousands of dollars to actually rank for these products and that's not a very low risk way i talk about the details of this very um specifically in many of my videos and in the pl club why this particular product is actually so high risk but the thing is you want to stand out you want to launch something where you can differentiate and stand out when you do ppc and this will not stand you out so that is a mistake number one and we want to ignore it the next one is this baby blanket that i pulled up so it looks like this just your typical baby blanket a lot of people do try to go into baby products because you know everyone is always having kids so that market seems to be alive however there is a big problem and that is when the revenue is actually too high people ignore this and they think you know what high revenue means high sales but let me tell you what's wrong with this right let's pay attention here the revenue is extremely high. The lowest is, I mean, that's as a sponsored ad, so we'll ignore him. The lowest looks like it's 41,000 or 35,000, and the highest goes all the way up to 133,000. So why is this bad? Because do you want to be making $50,000 a month on the product? Yes, you do. However, again, similar to the first product, consider how am I actually going to rank to the first page? It's not going to be random. It's not going to be with PPC because when there are that many competitors doing that high, they can afford to put money in PPC. So your campaigns are going to be very expensive and you're not going to be able to rank with just that because it's such a dense, dense market with people doing so well. So in order to get to the first page, you actually have to match the sales of the sellers on the first page. And how in the world are you going to match $50,000 of revenue? in a low risk way that means you have to have that much capital let's look at him for example he's doing forty two thousand. let's actually look at the lowest right lowest is thirty five thousand revenue he is selling two thousand nine hundred and forty one units a month okay let's say that it's ten dollars each like to order it and to get it into amazon on the maximum side that's a lot of money right three thousand times ten dollars 
do you have $30,000 to invest into this product? Even if it's less than that, even if it's $5, do you have $15,000 a month to start up to invest this? You probably don't and most people don't. That's why it makes us high risk and that's not including all the ranking and uh, paying for the giveaways and everything. So you want to avoid these types of situations as well. Next, let's go to this. These water balloons. Okay, let's look at this market. High revenue. Um, okay, wow. People are selling this for a high amount as well as, as high as $47. Let's look at the reviews. They look pretty low. So what's wrong with this product? And this is another huge, huge mistake. Well, despite the fact that the reviews are low, which is actually not a good thing. That actually means this is for sure a uh, market with a high turnover rate. Plus there's a merchant fulfilled. So these are for sure drop shippers or Chinese manufacturers. I can guarantee it because of the really, really low reviews, but let's actually and Amazon is, um, has a percentage of this market share, but that's a detour. Let's actually look at the search volume. And that's why I don't trust these review scores either because there's so much wrong with this product, but it has a higher score rating than a lot of products I see. Let's look at here at the search volume. 3,053, no wait, 3, 353,000 searches a month. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Again, search volume is incredibly important. People ignore search volume like it doesn't even matter. Like they can just look at this market, but search volume tells you a lot of things. It tells you if it's the main keyword, it's telling you if there's this weird market gap, or let's say if it's a high search volume and there's not enough sales, maybe it's a market people want, but the, the demand is high, but the product is low. It could also mean there's a lot of sketchy things going on. And a search volume, again, goes back to the same mistake of you will not be able to rank to the top easily and in a low risk way. You're going to have to put in a lot of money. And I just really advise against these search volumes. High is not always good. You know, uh, more, less is more the expression, <laughs> less is more follow that with Amazon. Less is definitely more, especially in here. I honestly like some products that have 4,000 searches a month, 7,000 searches a month, 15,000 searches a month do really well. When you start to get above 20, 25, 30,000, that's when things get sketchy. That's when the black hat players start to come in. That's when it gets more competitive and your listing is going to probably get negative reviews from competitors. There's a lot of things. Okay. Don't get into that. Let's move on to the next product. These resistant bands. I know that you've seen these kind of all over the place. Um, so here they are. They've been all over the place for a long time and it seemed like a good market, but um, it wasn't but even especially now. So what's the problem here? Again, the sales are high. Search volume is incredibly high. So obviously for that reason, but let's look at the reviews. Reviews are crazy high. 20,000, 11,000, 30,000, 5,000, 1,000, a couple hundred thousand. You would think that this would go without saying, but it still doesn't. People ignore high reviews all the time. Not just thousands of reviews, but yeah, actually thousands, thousands. People came to me before and they're like, this is my product. What, like, why am I not? What do you think about this? Why am I not selling it? I had a coaching call with her. She showed me her product and all of her competitors had over a thousand reviews and I said, please tell me you have not paid the supplier yet. She has already. She paid a down deposit. It's almost finished. And she was stuck trying to sell this inventory. And she spent around $10,000 for the goods and for the shipping. And that's not including PPC, ranking, anything. And for a fact, you cannot outcompete people with thousands of reviews or even a um, even high hundreds. There's very specific strategies of reviews that I teach to all my students, both in the PL club and in my course. And this is not it. So anything with high reviews, ignore, ignore, ignore. And that brings me to my last point of these wonderful aluminum pans. I've made a few videos about them for different things. Um, but let's just run the Chrome extension. Another thing people do is they ignore bad profit margins. This product actually looks quite credible where it used to when I first looked at it a while ago and still kind of does. Actually, the sales are quite good. The review count is good and the search volume is actually got higher. It was around 11,000 when I first looked into it. Looks like the demand is higher for whatever reason. Maybe it jumps up with seasonality. However, the most important thing is that it looks like a low risk market and 
In fact, I actually went into the sourcing stages, but I found out that the profits were not there. Even with sea shipping and these aluminum pans, they are just way too bulky, way too expensive to actually make this product profitable. And when you do the calculations, including the Amazon FBA fees and the competitive pricing to price it at, you will realize that the margins just are not there. And some people are just so excited that they find a market which they think is a golden unicorn that looks low risk, so that they just ignore the fact that if they actually were to go into this, they would at most break even if not be at a minor loss. There was no profit to actually take home. And if you're not actually taking a profit home, what's the point? There's actually a lot of people that do this, whether they're drop shipping or even some wholesale people that have these crazy sales and even private label sellers, but their products are barely at break even and they make zero dollars. And what's the point of doing all that effort if you're not going to make any money whatsoever? So that's another thing is always calculate your profits to make sure that you're taking into account your actual product, the shipping, the PPC, um, and then of course, um, the Amazon fees. Cause that's, it all factors in and you want to not run into cash flow issues, right? So this is part one. Okay. There's going to be a part two. There's a lot you can say, see, I have a little script right here. I thought of the most dangerous things from experience from my students that people run into. So they're outlined here. I'm going to make a second video about this. There's other mistakes that newbies and non newbies make in product research and just when starting Amazon. And if you eliminate them, your journey will be easier. It was a pleasure and I will see you in part two.